What's up guys, DRock1992 here. Uh, for this next video, I'm going to be reviewing uh, Horrible Bosses 2. Uh, like I said in the last video, I was going to review Horrible Bosses, and I did do that in the last video. Um, so here we go on reviewing Horrible Bosses number 2, the big sequel. Um, it was one of those movies this year that I was really, really looking forward to. Um, I asked my friends to go with me, and they said yes, and uh, we went to go see it on Friday. And uh, I, I'll i get right into the review first off. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Horrible Bosses 2 returns the cast, m most of the cast returns. Actually, pretty much all of them from the first movie except for Colin Farrell. I'm not going to give away how... Uh, that hap how he doesn't return in the second movie. You gotta watch the first one. But um, you have a returning cast of Jason Sudeikis, Charlie Day, Jason Bateman, Kevin Spacey, Jennifer Aniston, uh, um, Jamie Foxx. Those are the six main returning characters in the movie. Um, a small supporting character was. Um, a woman named Lindsay Sloan who played Charlie Day's character's uh, fiance. So, um, and what actually, I think it's the wife in the second movie, I believe. But, um, <coughs> with some new characters, uh, Chris Pine plays uh, an investor's son in this movie. A, um, a company a guy's son, uh, the father of this of Chris Pine's character is played by Christoph Waltz uh, from the movies uh, *Inglorious Bastards*, *Django Unchained*, uh, a few others, just, a few others as well. But um, but Christoph Waltz and Chris Pine are the newcomers in this movie, primary newcomers. Uh, so essentially, what happens is that. The bosses, they're all working for themselves now, and they're all looking to go into business together. Um, or rather, Bateman, Sudeikis, and Day, they all decide to go into business by themselves, and they have an idea for a product that is pretty funny. Uh, the name's pretty funny. I'm not going to spoil it. But um, with their product, they're looking to hit it big for sure, and they go to this investor. Uh, Christoph Waltz character and Chris Pine and his son Chris Pine's character they go to Chris Pine's uh, first and invest it they're turned down well actually they're turned down when they turn down money to when at first they turn down money to sell their product to Pine's character's company or Christoph Waltz's character's company um so what happens is they're rejected at first by Chris Pine's character, but then they get the okay from Waltz's character, Christoph Waltz's character, and basically they are, they have a hundred, uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, product, uh, product, a lot of their own product to sell, and so they go ahead and get going on it, but then they are totally fooled. Uh, they're totally, they get it knocked they get tricked, you know. <clears throat> they, um, in lack of better words, they get their asses handed to them by Waltz and Pine's characters, uh, mainly Christoph Waltz's character, and they have to give up their product to Waltz's character. So what do the horrible, bo uh, but what do Bateman, Sudeikis, and Day do? after their product is given up, or is forcibly given up. They decide to kidnap instead. They decide to go ahead on a kidnapping plan instead of uh, a murder plan uh, from the first movie. Chris Pine, they decide to kidnap Chris Pine, Christoph Waltz's character's son, um, as I said before, but um, they decide to kidnap Chris Pine and the only reason I say the actual names of the actors is because I can't really remember the uh, other actors' names. Uh, 
Nick, Dale, and Kurt are the three names of the uh, of Sudeikis, Bateman, and Day's characters. But for all intents and purposes, I don't want to really associate one with the other because I might be wrong. But anyway, a lot of characters. But but anyway, Bateman, Sudeikis, and Day they decide to kidnap Chris Pine, and they go ahead and they um. And they kind of pull, they kind of pull it off, um, unsuspectingly, or surprisingly, you know. To their surprise, they pull it off, for sure. But then, uh, Chris Pine, Chris Pine wants to join up with them in getting mo more money from Christoph Waltz's character. Uh, they want to get uh, more money from the ransom that the uh, three were that Bateman, Day, and Sudeikis were making, were planning to make. So anyway, the plan, uh, the plan proceeds, and it is, I mean, it's just, like the first movie, it's just, it just hits. Like the first movie, it just hits with the hijinks and the mayhem of the kidnapping plot, pretty much just like the f mayhem and, and, uh, uh, just like the mayhem of the first movie with the murder plot, um, the plan to murder all the bosses. This time they're planning to get as much money as they can. I think five five million dollars out of um, Christoph Waltz's pocket. And so, and these two are pretty bad. Um, Chris Pine and Christoph Waltz are the main villains in the movie. Uh, and without giving anything else away, um, I, th I mean, any key plot lines away is what I mean. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it was just, it was a very good movie. Uh, very funny, very, uh, you know, it was very funny. A uh, lot of scenes stuck. A lot of scenes in particular were very memorable, including there was one at the very beginning. Uh, where they're on this TV show, and uh, they're they're on this uh, Good Morning talk show, and that's all I'm gonna say. Watch it if you get to see it in theaters. Watch that opening scene; you laugh your ass off. It's just so funny. Uh, a few other scenes in particular that come to mind, uh, involving mainly the three characters. Everybody's good again. Um. I thought that Kevin Spacey's character, he's in a small he's in a small role compared to the first one, but I thought he was pretty funny um, in the two scenes that he was in. Jennifer Aniston, once again, very funny. I think even funnier than the first one, uh, which is dumb something to say because she was very funny in the first one. Uh, Charlie Day, very funny. Bateman, very funny. Sudeikis. Excuse me, Sudeikis, very funny. Among newcomers, Chris Pine was um, uh, Chris Pine was pretty funny. Um, you know, just a uh, kind of not your stereotypical villain in some ways, but just a pretty funny addition to the cast. He was solid. Um, Christoph Waltz's character was okay. They could have built more out of that character, which is the one complaint I do have about the movie, um, is that his character would have could have been better, for sure. But, um, but still, from what he did have, he was okay as a character. Um, Jamie Foxx, more of a role in two than one, and he's pretty funny, too. This, mo this movie is overall laugh-out-loud funny, very good, and I'm just absolutely surprised, beyond belief, that it got only a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I realize that um, sequels normally don't do as good as the originals, as the original movies, you know, the very first. Uh, sequels just don't do that well, especially comedy sequels. But I thought this was just so funny. And I'm going to give it the same review as I did for Horrible Bosses, four and a half out of five stars. But 
I actually, as far as movies in general, I like two better than one, definitely. They're both very funny movies, but I, lo I love two. I just love two a lot. Um, and I give four and a half to both of them because there wasn't a lot of issues in both of those movies. Um, the only issue in this movie was Christoph Waltz's character. It could have been developed better by the writers. But overall, this is a very good movie, very funny. I was laughing my ass off throughout the whole theater experience, throughout the whole movie in the theater. It was an awesome theater experience for me. I recommend you go see Horrible Bosses too, for sure, if you haven't seen it yet. Um, still out in theaters. It's the second week of uh, it coming out it, out in theaters. But um, yeah, I recommend it. Go see that. Go see the movie. Uh, you will laugh your ass off for sure. Uh, that's it for Horrible Bosses two and the review for it. Uh, D Rock nineteen ninety two out.